How's it going? Guys, the day has finally come. I'm gonna rebuild my plasma cutter. Clearly, this has been a long time coming. This is the first CNC machine that I ever built and it's kinda on its last legs. Building this machine absolutely changed my life. It changed the way I work with metal and I feel like it opened up the amount of stuff that I could make in less time. So, while the machine is very loved and appreciated, it's a total piece of shit. When I built it, I made no way to replace the slats. That's like a solid three quarters of an inch of boogers. The X motor is held on with a clamp because it started cranking this way and the belt would fly off. You got a bunch of random tubes that are just cut and zip tied everywhere from upgrades that I tried and failed to do. The floating head is a 3D printed part. And as you can see, it's really begun to melt badly and it's held up using bailing wire. That is true precision. Nothing wrong with that. And the biggest problem of them all, it's only four by four with a cutting area of approximately 40 by 30 inches. We got a shed now and I wanna cut full sheets. Now, enough messing around, let's hop to it. As you can see, I've already cut all the tubing up for the frame. I spent nearly all day doing this, which that's not something I'd normally do, but the more accurate these cuts are, the easier everything else is gonna be. So, it was worth the time. Now then, start throwing the frame together. This, I gotta go wash my face. This is not really in shot. There we kinda go. This is going to be the outer frame of the plasma cutter. As you can see, it's almost the same height as me. That's worrisome, cause I am gonna have to drag this frame back there when I'm done building it. You can kind of see the shape of the machine. We're gonna have a linear rail at the end of this, one at the end of that, and the gantry is at an angle from plumb. The way that this thing is gonna work is I just come in and lean a sheet of metal on top of it, basically making the footprint of the thing nine feet by three feet, which is pretty manageable. I'm just gonna tack everything together until the frame is fully constructed and I know that everything is square, parallel, all that good stuff. I'm building it properly. This is so unlike me. Anyway, uh, I think I need more space, so to the driveway. You know, part of the reason that I don't plan my projects is I think it makes a better video that way to uh, slowly limp my way through. This is all planned out. Where's the conflict in this story? I haven't done this in a while, but I think the best way to get through building this frame is a montage. Oh, this is crazy mother got our basic frame put together. Now is our opportunity to um, demonstrate one of the problems with my existing plasma cutter. This is the problem. See, I made the width of the table 48 inches for, you know, a four by eight sheet. But that was forgetting that these sheets come at 49 inches. So every time I gotta buy steel, I have to cut a whole inch off the side. I'll be real happy to never have to do that again. Now then, let's take a moment of silence and enjoy this old guy's last big job. Well, 
Seems we've had a bit of a dramatic ending. You done good, man. Rest easy. This is a part to hold the linear rail. It goes on the frame just like that. Well, like that times 17. The linear rail can go on there just like that. This is what will hold the slats that I can install on the bed. To install these all uh, straight, I've gone ahead and clamped this one by two square tube across the whole thing. I can come in, set the piece in place, clamp it down, and weld it up. Oh, I just gotta do that, uh, I think like 80 more times. No problem. All right, so that's just about all the welding on the frame that needs to be done. I got a friend coming over to help me move a chicken coop. I think I'm gonna try and sucker him into moving this, but I wanna finish all the welding first. So I gotta sheet this thing real fast. I think I'm just gonna do 16 gauge on the back of these one inch pickets. So no time to mess around, let's do it. Sucker. These are parts that will make up the gantry. These go together just like that. So this is the start of our gantry. This is where the stepper will mount. And this is just for some idler pulleys. Now to attach this to the frame of the machine, we're gonna use this linear bearing that I made in a previous video. I got it. This all runs pretty dang smooth and it's tight. Now the only difference between this and that is I made two and I cut the bottom off of them. Well, that's all fine and dandy. As you can see, I planned for these to be bolt holes, but I decided they're plug weld holes. Efficient. And I had a bit of a didn't see it coming in CAD problem with this bearing where the stepper motor mount ended up colliding with it. So I just installed it before welding it on and it's trapped there forever. I doubt that I'll ever have to change it because there's so many bearings taking up the force here. But uh, yeah. Oopsie. Now then, let's go throw these on the machine. All righty, got these installed on the machine. And honestly, this bearing that we had to uh, basically trap forever was super helpful. All the other bearings are adjustable and without a fixed point, that's how you end up in uh, optimization hell. But basically I adjusted the bearings until this thing is square to the bed and moves pretty freely. Now, it's loud, but grow it, it's in a shed. Now, we can start building the parts that mount to these. Aluminum! In an effort to make it a little bit lighter, I'm gonna build the rest of the gantry out of aluminum. Now, the old plasma cutter kinda does a nasty job of aluminum, so I gotta cut these all out by hand. But, we can take this as an opportunity to show that you don't need a CNC machine to cut out funky patterns. You just need access to a printer. This is the uh, Matthias Wandel method. Here we have our quarter inch plate of aluminum, and here are all the parts that need to come out of it. So, we can just take regular old glue stick, you know, the kind you used to sniff in elementary school, the good old days. Ah, get that thing glued in place. If I was smart, I would have cut one of these edges so I could line it up, but I'll never claim to be smart, but at least I can learn. I did it with the rest. Now you got a bunch of dirty pictures glued all over a piece of aluminum. Nice. So then, let them dry. Then you can come in and center punch all the holes. Now, you can use your cutting tool of choice to cut all these shapes out. 
and then drill the holes out later. When I built my original plasma cutter, I did this all with a grinder. Now you can imagine that was a sparky, flamey mess. This time, we're gonna use this Harbor Freight scroll saw. It was on sale, how could I not? This is what happens when you spend three videos building a bandsaw, when you have no space for it and end up leaving it outside and stealing parts off of it and... Yeah, I don't have a bandsaw anymore, so... See how this thing does. Bam! Really doesn't seem too bad. Oh man, that is slow. Maybe I need a different blade. It should have came with some. No different blades. Harbor Freight! Look at this piece of trash. Even with nothing on it, the base vibrates uncontrollably. But I found cutting eighth inch material isn't as bad as cutting the quarter inch. So I guess we'll use it. But I'm going to try and cut as much as I can just using a circular saw and then use this to get the funky contours. Then once we finish all the parts, and throw this thing in the trash where it belongs. Harbor Freight! Now imagine that, but for a half a day. Blam! And here we have all of the parts that we need for this. Look at that finish. Some may call it a trashy finish. I just hit it with some 100 grit sandpaper and I thought that the dull kind of finish looks pretty dang cool, so dig it. It's not entirely because that's the easiest finish to do. So, let me show you how these go together. We've got a couple stepper mounts. These install in their respective little slots. It's been quite some time since I last TIG welded aluminum. Let's hope it's like riding a bike. Probably be helpful if I turn the argon on. Dang it. Not good, but also not bad. I'll take it. I mean, I think most people would argue that it's pretty bad, but you know, it's through them. So. With all the stepper mounts welded in place, we can now install this piece. And this is just like the square two pieces that we made using two inch. It gets the same bearing setups as the other ones. This goes right there. As you can see, these tubes now have caps with tapped holes in them. Those can be attached to this plate through these holes, like so. Now, we can attach all three of these to this plate, like that. Then we can go to the other side and get these things welded on a plate. You like my third hand? And just like that, we've turned our pile of 2D parts into 3D parts. So we can start building this thing. This guy is going to hold our bearings just the same as the other square tube. Just like that. Now the other side gets a ball screw as well as a couple linear rails. And here you can see my first big oopsie. I planned for this to have linear rails that go all the way to the top here. But those are not the linear rails that came. Amazon! Rather than returning them and getting the proper linear rails like any uh, sensible person would do, I made it work. We're gonna have the same amount of travel for the z-axis as I planned for, but we only get to have one of these bearing blocks per rail. I mean, it should be fine. It's just a plasma cutter. If I find that doesn't work, then I'll be taking this apart, putting the longer rails on and getting two of these on. But for now, I'm okay with living with it. Whoa, whoa! Now then the ball screw gets a spacer. Then we can install whoop, this plate somehow. Or this gets fastened to the ball screw and to the linear bearings. Just like that. Now when we spin the ball screw, the gantry moves. Now then, this plate 
also get some linear rails. And then on top of these rails goes this plate. So this will act as the floating head for probing the metal. And that'll work by throwing a button up here like so and popping a couple springs up here. So now this can be driven down into the bed. Once the tip hits, this will be pushed up until it hits that button and it'll know where it is. Beautiful. Now then, real quick, I gotta add a mount for a limit switch for the Z-axis. I'm just gonna sneak that in right here. Just like that. And lastly, we just stick a stepper right here. Beautiful. Then on the back side of this, we get another stepper motor with a 10 millimeter GT2 timing pulley. So this gets attached by two M5 machine screws. Then on the front two, it gets a washer, then an idler pulley, and a spacer, just like that. So now we've got a free spinning idler on there. See where I'm going with this? Whack another one on the other side, like so. We can loop our belt through here. This is how it's gonna drive the gantry back and forth. Eh, pretty nice, huh? All right, let's install this on the linear rails. Don't worry about the mess, it helps me concentrate. So this, goes in here like so. I've also got this piece, which will slide onto the third rail. Hopefully it won't interfere with anything. It's kind of looking like it's gonna interfere. Oh God, didn't think that through. Uh-oh. Well, we got a problem. It seems our hero has made yet another stupid mistake. How will he overcome this? Did he just spend a whole video making a heaping pile of trash? Find out next time on Dragon Balls. All right, I'll admit that got a little unhinged. I wasn't quite sure how to come to a natural ending with this one because I filmed it as if it was gonna be one video because naive old me thought I'd run into no problems and build a plasma cutter in two weeks. Clearly I don't really learn from my experiences. So, cutting it here. This feels like a happy middle or I'm sick of editing, one of those two. Now, while I got you guys here, I got a couple of things I wanna bounce off you. One, if I were to sell plans for this plasma cutter, would any of you guys be interested? Two, when I first built a plasma cutter, the hardest part for me to figure out was the electronics and the setup of Linux CNC. There's really not that many videos on YouTube on that, so I, I try to stay away from tutorials because uh, I'm no role model. But if you guys would be interested in seeing a tutorial on that, let me know in the comments for both those things. That's what I got for you this week. If you like what you saw, leave a good old dinger. Think about subscribing and thank you for watching.